Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records talking about Josh Freeze. Josh Freeze has been announced to be the new drummer for the Foo Fighters taking over for Taylor Hawkins. And I think it's exciting. You know, I'm not a big grunge guy or post-grunge uh, rock metal guy necessarily, but I am a fan of great musicians. And I'm a fan, in this case, of, of um, bands overcoming you know, some tragic loss and Taylor Hawkins. I was a Taylor Hawkins fan. And I'll tell you a reason why I was a Taylor Hawkins fan, because his the way that he played with emotion, the way that he was demonstrative in the way that he played, and, and his playing in general inspired me because he looked like he was having so much fun. You know, we want our rock stars to... They look like rock stars on stage. You know, Phil Linett from Thin Lizzy called it throwing shapes. You know, when you do these type of things with your guitar or you, or you get like this with your drums and you want to you want to project that, I think, because part of the visual of seeing a band live is, or part of the thing about seeing a band live is the visual. It's not just the music. I mean, the Grateful Dead can sit there and and just play music or, or Steely Dan or somebody like that. But for some rock bands, you want to see the bass player doing throwing shapes. You want to see the drummer throwing shapes. You want to see the front man being crazy. And that's what Taylor Hawkins brought to the to the stage. And Josh Freeze is no exception here. And again, a little bit of a brief story. He was born on December 25th, um, 1972. In fact, he was born about two weeks after I was born. And, um, which is interesting and, and listening to some interviews, some of the things he talks about, it's, it's just interesting that he was basically the exact same age when certain things in his, his life happened. His father, Stan Freeze, uh, was a tuba player, the orchestra and conductor of the orchestra of Disneyland. So at a young age, in the seventies, even, he was able to see, go to sound stages and see Buddy Rich. In fact, Stan you know, uh, or sit so close that he could spit on the drum kit <laughs> um, and see Buddy Rich and see these guys. And his father was a musician. And his brother, by the way, was a musician as well. Uh, being indoctrinated into the, into the music business, even on that level, an orchestral level, is amazing. Uh, he was going to NAMM shows. He says that um, Alex Van Halen was a, was a big influence. You know, Van Halen was a was a, a Los Angeles area band uh, in the seventies and eighties. Obviously, was another influence. Going to Nam shows, meeting Vinny Calaluda, uh, who played with Frank Zappa. You know, who played with you know, basically staying in everybody. Uh, following him around like a puppy dog at Nam and having Vinny take him kind of under his wing, having, having Vinny leave him and his father tickets uh, to see jazz shows on Sunday nights at the Baked Potato in, in Los Angeles and being able to sit behind the drums and watch Vinny play. Befriending people like Terry Bazio, Jim Keltner, Jeff Picaro, you know, some of these great drummers in his teenage years, growing up with the best players in the industry. You know, by nine, by the mid, mid 80s, he's playing, playing in cover bands at Disneyland, on the sound stages at Disneyland, a band called Polo. Uh, he joins a, a famous uh, Orange County based punk rock band called the, the Vandals in 1989. Stays with them for quite a long time. Uh, plays on a Suicidal Tendencies record, The Art of Rebellion, 1992. Um, starts playing with Paul Westerberg from The Replacements in 1992 as well. In fact, in, 19, in 2013, does some shows with them at, the, at some reunion shows. Uh, in 1997, he replaces Matt Sorum in Guns N' Roses and stays with Guns N' Roses from... 97 through 2000, which if you know anything about Guns N' Roses, 
Um, that was a period in between albums, really. It was a period where Axel was trying to figure out Chinese democracy. In fact, he plays, Josh Freeze plays on 30 tracks that would ultimately, uh, some of which would be used for Chinese democracy, even though his parts were played note by note by a different drummer, and he's not on the Chinese democracy, although he did co-write this, co the song Chinese Democracy. He does get recorded with Guns N' Roses on the song Oh My God on the End of Days soundtrack. Uh, he leaves Guns N' Roses in 2000 to form um, a perfect circle with uh, Maynard uh, James Keenan and Howdershell and stays with the band for quite some time and plays on their first records. Uh, in 1996, he joins Devo. He says that he ha there's video of him jumping around in footed pajamas when he's like eight or nine years old, opening up a new Devo album. And then to think that 10 or 12, 13 years later, he's in the band and he's still in Devo to this day. He plays on The Offspring's uh, 2003 album, Splinter. Uh, he plays on the tours with Sting on the Broken Music Tour in 2005. I saw him two or three times on the With Teeth Nine Inch Nails tour uh, in 05 and 06. And that's really the, the one I think and only two or three times that I saw him were with Nine Inch Nails. And I'm not a big Nine Inch Nails guy necessarily. One of my buddies, the bass player Billy in my band is, and he took me to these shows, but the shows were amazing. And Josh was definitely a big part of the reason why they were amazing. Uh, he played on Wing, uh, Ween, a Quebec album from 2003. He played with, with Sublime with Rome in the in the 2010s. He's played with Paramore. Uh, he played on the High Hopes Bruce Springsteen record in 2014. He plays with Michael Blubile. He's played with Evanescence. He's played with Infectious Grooves. He is a high energy drummer, very similar vein of Taylor Hawkins. He has been a journeyman. He's played on over 400 records. He's a session guy. You know, just like Kali and, and, and some of those guys before him, th he was a frontline call guy for any session, whether it be a, a, a commercial or, or a soundtrack or, a, 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 or some of the great records like Springsteen. Um... And it's cool, I think, that he's getting this jump chair. He's 50 years old. He's done all this work. And he's only 50. And that's a similar age as Dave and those guys. So he's going to be able to go on for the next 20 years if he wants to and be in one of the biggest bands in the world. And, of course, he has hit the big stage many times. But um, it's cool that he's going to really be able to, to, to fit in it seemingly with this band to... To go beyond, you know, there was talk about uh, Danny Carey joining Foo Fighters. There was talk about Matt Cameron, who is in Pearl Jam and in Soundgarden. You know, he doesn't need to be, Soundgarden, I guess, is broken up, but doesn't need to be in the Foo Fighters also. I love it that Josh Fries is in the band. Subscribe to my channel. Um, we talk music here every single day um, and uh, celebrate excellence in music. Um, I think is what we try to do here, but peace out. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot.